the EP Podcast. Heard everywhere podcasts can be found, and always at the eppodcast.com. And belly on up to the nine foot homemade oak bar. Pour yourself a cold one. This is the EP Podcast. My name is Chris Lanuti. Hannah's got the week off. She'll be back next week. Although you will hear her at certain points during the show because I'm going to be unveiling more entries in the Battle of Evergreen Park. We also have Music Fest coming to the American Legion, the headlining band on this episode. But first, joining me on the phone line right now, Lorraine Swanson from The Patch. If you would have told me after the tornado sirens midweek last week that that wouldn't have been the biggest story in Evergreen Park, I would have shook my head and said, are you kidding me? Evergreen Park Police received an active shooter call at Mariano's in Evergreen Park. They responded as you do to a call like that. Upon arrival this past Thursday morning, they found tragically a 21-year-old female by the name of Jaylene Flores shot dead by her boyfriend, Armani Henry, also 21 years old, who had fled the scene. As this was happening, it was all over social media. My neighbors were talking to me about it. And there's been so much written about it in the patch. That's why we have Lorraine joining us. But one of the biggest things that stuck out to me is that she had asked for an order of protection. She had been granted an order of protection and Cook County never got the order served. And trust me, that happens far too often in this county. Lorraine Swanson on the EP podcast to kick us off. How are you, Lorraine? Good. How, uh, just a very scary, tragic event last week. And at the time, we didn't know what was going on inside the store. If multiple people were shot, it, it was just this poor uh, young woman who the in bond court, they said he had sent her 124 texts. Um, he had confronted her Wednesday in the parking lot. You know, uh, apparently an air tag was found on her car and like uh, Monday and a family member removed it. So he went over there on Wednesday to uh, confront her after work about why did you remove the air tag? Well, how dare she? That little piece of information makes the story even crazier. He's using a tracking device where he can track her car on his phone. That's what an air tag is. There's so much to unpack here on this episode of the EP Podcast brought to you proudly by the First National Bank of Evergreen Park and that iconic building at the corner of 95th and Pulaski. Look, I love this bank. You should love it too. It's your community bank. They know you when you walk in the door. You open up a checking account, $300 bonus. You open up a savings account, $200 bonus. These are with qualifying activities, but if you qualify, you can make 500 bones by just opening up a checking and a savings account there. My kids have junior savers accounts. I can show them how to grow their money, go over their finances with them. All the ATMs nationwide are free. That means you get a fee, the bank puts the money back in. And there's no overdraft charges. I just saw a big bank lose a massive court case where they have to pay everybody back for all these fees they were double dipping on. That does not happen at the First National Bank of Evergreen Park. You need a bank you can rely on, one that's embedded in the community. Get down to 95th and Pulaski, that iconic building, and go with them. I guarantee you'll be happy you did so. Now, Lorraine, you covered this extensively, and the thing that sticks out to me that kind of got me was the idea that this young lady asked for an order of protection from the courts. The courts granted an order of protection, and it was never served and eventually expired. And people who aren't familiar with how this works, let me tell you about my 10 years of experience working for Cook County as a dispatcher and the personal experience I have had with people close to me who have had to go out and try to get an order of protection and had to jump through hoops and how hard it is to actually get the things served so they're actually protected. A lot of these orders don't get served. I don't know exactly what the reason is for it. I have somebody very close to me who tried to get one within the last year, had the address, They went once, didn't find the person, they stopped going. Multiple court hearings that continue to extend it. Sheriff's Department never serves it. None of the paperwork ever makes it back to her. The whole system is a mess. 
Imagine if there would have been an order of protection and it was active. It had actually been served and he shows up looking for that air tag that was on the back of her car and the police come to the scene and lock him up. Thursday may not have happened the way that it actually happened. And you miss it in the middle of the tragedy, but somebody has to ask why the sheriff's department isn't serving all of these orders. But trust me, you think you get this order of protection and all of a sudden everything's going to be fine. Unfortunately, that's not how it works here in Cook County. I, I don't know why. I don't know what it's like in other parts of the country. She had worked at uh, Amazon Fresh in Oak Lawn, uh, just over the border, across Pulaski. And there was an incident in April where it sounds like he accosted her, uh, or that's what the police said. And she filed a complaint against him. He, he was definitely stalking her. I, I don't know if an air tag or him showing up at her workplace would have pushed along a civil order. You know, we'll never know, but I agree. It has to be streamlined. Especially because she had the incident over in Oak Lawn. The fact that there wasn't something that was already protecting her at this point really is kind of an indictment on the entire system. Like, you could say you can go out and get something to protect you, but what you put people through and how hard it is for it to actually get served it leads to tragedies like this. Now, did she work at the Marianos? Was that the thing? She was an employee? Yeah, she was an employee there, and um, she had previously been employed at Amazon Fresh. Just a hardworking young woman, and I just don't know what possesses a partner, what it is that they can't handle when somebody rejects them or says no, and this whole thing of, if I can't have you, nobody can. Well, you know, this guy, he just made his life a thousand times worse. He threw his life along, uh, away, and... He, he took her life, too. You, on the other hand, Lorraine, did an excellent job getting out all the information as quickly as possible. Because, again, this came out as a very different type of call. And you could see, like, on Facebook and the social media pages, people were reacting to it because they thought there was a threat to the public. He got that up pretty quick, and I'm pretty diligent about getting it not only on the patch social media, but on neighborhood social media. And this is a Facebook kind of town. And um, Chief Saunders, he was very forthcoming. One of the TV journalists described him as very talkative, but he really, he gave us the facts and there were, there was an area they wouldn't let any of the employees or shoppers leave for hours. They wanted to interview everybody. And here's kind of just sort of a nice story that came out of this. Um, the folks at the White Castle, which is. Yeah, it's right there on 95th, right by the tracks, right near where the Mariano says, yes. They brought like pop and crave cases out to the officers and the people who had to wait and uh, had to them. That was uh, to make a horrible situation a little more comfortable for people who had to witness this. The manager, after he heard gunshots, he chased the, the gunmen through the store. Oh, my goodness. So they tracked him using these plate readers. They were able to get a uh, a bead on his plate. I, uh, Chief Saunders mentioned that they were able to get the plate number. He was driving a red Ford Focus. I drive a red Ford Focus. Well, they, they didn't they figure out exactly who he was very quickly because of the video. And then these plate readers, we've talked about them on the show before, Evergreen Park has them, but they're, they're all over the metropolitan area. I've been part, as a dispatcher years ago, of, you know, a unit tracking somebody in the moment through the city, in the different villages, who was trying to escape. And those things come in so handy in being able to find the per those in the cell phones. They can use the cell phones and they can use the play trackers. And, it, you know, it's not exactly like the movies. Like I know and sometimes in the movies, like it's like zoom in, enhance, look from the look from a satellite. They don't have that, but they have a lot of tools to track somebody quickly. 
Well, the the thing about the flock cameras, which are the predominant brand, um, Oak Lawn has them. They're they're solar powered, evergreen. You know, they're all over the suburbs. Is that you can pinpoint the car. You could say, give me all the Ford Focuses. Now give me the red Ford Focus. Now single out a vehicle, but they got him pretty fast. I also heard he had a vanity plate. I don't know. That comes back to the old axiom I was always told by old police officers that if uh, if they weren't stupid, we wouldn't catch half of the criminals out there. But I mean, like having a vanity plate makes it easier to find you. He's caught. He would, I would imagine he's been caught. He's been arraigned. He's in, he's in jail. He has a high bond. There'll be a case. There's video. There's witnesses. This, I mean, I'd be shocked if he doesn't go away for a long, long time for what he did. But it's an absolute shame, again, when you think about it. Somebody got up that morning uh, and went to work at the Mariano's in Evergreen Park, and it ended in tragedy. And it's a real shame that she, uh, you know, probably was trying her hardest to get as much uh, much done to protect herself as possible. And unfortunately, her order never got served, and it wasn't enough. On the other side of the coin, it sounds like Evergreen Park Police with a very quick response time to what they originally thought was an active shooter, and they got information out very quickly. Yeah, and they did a great job, and uh, they it was by the book. They were just cool and collected and you know, I take very seriously too. And, you know, I know sometimes police departments get kind of impatient when I call or email or text them, but I don't want to see people in fear and people afraid and crazy rumors going around. It doesn't do the community any good. No, it definitely doesn't. Thank you very much, Lorraine for covering it on Thursday and throughout all the way through today and probably beyond. Over on the patch, you can get more over there. Lorraine, thanks for joining us here on the EP Podcast. Yeah, well, thank you, Chris. Building relationships, supporting the community, and service. These are the things that Country Financial stands for. They're more than just an office you may pass by as you drive through Evergreen Park. They're neighbors who lend a helping hand and support the fabric of your community, including charitable organizations, sports, financial education, and civic organizations. And since Country is already your neighbor, they want to get together and chat. Call your local Country Financial representative, Mike Thauer, today at 708 425 1559 to talk about the things that are important to you and how he can help you protect them. So Music Fest is returning to the American Legion on the 22nd of July. Really good time last year, should be even bigger this year. Sarah Haugie and her band, Whiskey and Harmony, will be one of the bands playing at the festival. Hi, Sarah. How are you? I'm doing well. How are you doing, Chris? Good, good. I, I appreciate you coming down here. Oh, not a problem. So, so what is Whiskey and Harmony? Because it seems to me... That name just says fun. Oh, yeah. We're, we like to have a ton of fun. We like to interact with the audience. Um, the name Whiskey and Harmony actually comes from, as you can hear in my voice, I've always had a raspy voice comparable to like Stevie Nicks, Janis Joplin. So uh, a long time ago, some guys like you and your whiskey voice, you're going somewhere. <laughs> your whiskey voice. <laughs> and uh, my husband, well, my now husband, we when, uh, when we met up, I remember he sang on stage with me. He just had this perfect harmony. And we were going back and forth with band names for a while. And I was like, you know what? Why not Whiskey and Harmony? And it stuck. And and so we're just a fun, we're country pop, oldies, rock. Um, like I said, we really like to interact with the audience. We take requests a lot. I'm not going to lie. Half the time we don't know, know the song that might not be rehearsed, but we'll try it. And we just like to have fun if somebody wants to hear something. And When I hear a band say that they do audience participation or they like to interact with the, the audience, that always that always piques my interest a little bit because that means you're taking the request, as you said. So, like, what type of music on the South Side gets requested the most? Because you, you mentioned a lot there, country and pop and rock and all these other – like, what do people actually – generally want to hear i mean it, i know there's always an idiot in the back who's yelling free bird but other oh, yeah. than that like what else is what else is getting requested the most uh most recently which is funny because i guess people watch that show yellowstone yes we've never watched it we've have... never watched yellowstone no. <laughs> it's a ridiculous show let me tell you something sarah it is a ridiculous show they're basically on a ranch and 
they, they're raising cattle, but if you aggravate one of them, they just murder you and throw you into a pit at the border. And nobody ever investigates it. And then they just go about their day. And every once in a while, a rival person blows up something. And then they have to go kill that guy and throw him in the pit at the border. And people eat this stuff up. <laughs> I mean, that sounds pretty intense. <laughs> <laughs> and in the middle of it, there's music. See, when we get home from gigs, I like to turn on TV shows we could fall asleep to. I feel like that would be so intense. I would be up all night. Oh, no, you're not watch. falling asleep to Yellowstone. Maybe no, we'll no, have no. to watch it in the winter time when we slow down. One minute you think everything's wonderful. They're having a concert. The next minute some child gets injured or somebody dies or a main character is hit by a car. It's 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 seriously, it's over the edge crazy. And uh, people, I, I think that's why people love the thing. But what what are they requesting because of uh, Yellowstone? Um, So... Like Morgan Wallen, I think last season on Yellowstone, we didn't understand why we were getting these requests because we always, you know, we're, I guess, primarily country. And my drummer and my husband have really good uh, country voices. So they asked for Morgan Wallen, uh, Tyler Childers, and now recently Zach Bryan. And until recently, we just connected that it's all artists that the songs are playing on Yellowstone. Yeah, so I like, that's, well, I that's guess true. we have to watch this TV show. And so I've been actually listening to those artists. My, Husband's been uh, covering a lot of Tyler Childers, and my drummer has been singing Morgan Wallen. So I think I'm going to take on Zach Bryan songs because I've got that rasp, and we uh, I wanted to, we're starting to work on it. The song called "Something in the Orange," which I think was on the last season. I think it was. Songs. I but, actually I is remember that a that. great song, I and it fits that, my yeah. raspy voice perfectly. So. Yeah. You're going to be at the American Legion's Music Fest. Uh, this is going to be Saturday, July the 22nd from 2 until 11 p.m. You have another band going on before you, or are you covering nine hours of music? I wish we could um, do nine hours of music. I think the most we've done straight without a break was about five hours. Five hours without a break? Southside Irish Parade uh, <laughs> out in Mount Greenwood at Blackthorn. Okay. It was just nonstop. You just played for five hours. I mean, we br- like when we had to go to the bathroom, I could play guitar and my husband will go to the bathroom that, and come so back. And so- you see, I noticed that even with you talking and I saw when I was looking up Whiskey and Harmony that you have multiple people that can sing. Yes. So you can get a break. Yes. Our drummer plays guitar. Our other drummer could play bass. I mean, we could all, and everybody sings. So it's just, I don't like when you have to turn on the jukebox because sometimes at any place, you know, you turn on music in the background and it's something completely different from what we're doing. And it just, it feels distracting. And I like to just keep everybody just interested. You know, if I feel like if we stop and take a break, then people are going to leave. And then it allows my drummer to go on and play guitar and just kind of sing and, you know, just kind of do his own thing, a little outlet. Or sometimes I'll just go solo and tell the guys, I'm like, go take a shot of whiskey. I'll play a couple right. songs. Well, you I know, mean, and- that's <laughs> the, the name of the band is Whiskey yeah, and Harmony. You have to have whiskey. I would expect it. I would expect whiskey right up on stage. Like, it should be a prop you when know, you're doing it. <laughs> we've had a bar to just give us a bottle. <laughs> it, it didn't turn out the way that you, well, it turned out the way that you think it would turn, turn out. Turn out as so. you expected it to <laughs> yes. turn out. Yes. So. Yes. I can understand that. Oh, that we've, makes... had, we've had some fun. When you're booking gigs around the South side, when you're doing something where you can cover a wide array of things, is that just easier for you guys to get gigs? Do you find that as, as a, as a positive for you? Or do you find yourself basically like, you know, we only end up playing these same three or four places because they love us. Like, what is it like booking when you're that kind of a band? Um, I think that we get a lot of private events because of our interaction. And a lot of times we get requests to, and if it goes over well, even the first time, or, you you know, we're just kind of like, you know, we should add this to the list and it just makes us more diverse. And so like somebody can book us and we've done it before because of all the requests and all the songs that we know together, you know, we could do a all seventies set or we can do an all 80, you know, we can do all country so i think that makes it because of our country pop oldies rock how i label it i mean we could fit in anywhere so i think it does give us a good chance of getting more gigs just because of how versatile we are will you have a set list for music fest or will you will you have like a a set first couple of songs that you're like these are the ones that always get people going like how does that how do you approach something like that i usually start with the first few songs um that kind of warm up my voice okay you know, just like easier ones, a couple in the key of G. It's a little bit, you know, Something just right in my regular range. Right. And then I I don't make set lists because I feel, I mean, obviously we don't print them. I could put them on the phone, but we never stick to it. So it's just time consuming. And then I get aggravated after the fifth song. Somebody's already like, oh, 
you know, I saw you guys before. Can you do Stevie Nicks? And I'm like, well, that's later on the list. But I guess our set list is the audience. <laughs> Your set list is the audience. I, I look around and I could usually get a pretty good idea of what kind of music they want to hear. So who else do you have playing before you? Uh, we have my friend Paul Sartori. His band is called Polly and the Shakers. Uh, they're on Facebook if everybody wants what, to look them up. What do they up. do? They're kind of similar to us where they'll take requests, but they're a little bit more like classic rock, um, pop. I know they have a little bit of country. But yeah, they're just danceable fun. I know they do some like Bon Jovi and that kind of fun. I like Bon Jovi. Yes. I'm a big Bon Jovi fan. I'm a closet Bon Jovi fan from way back, okay? I was a kid that was listening to Bon Jovi in the 80s when everybody else was listening to Guns N' Roses. And I got picked on a lot for it. Oh, really? But I didn't care because I loved Bon Jovi. I do. I like Bon Jovi. I like Guns N' Roses, too. I like Guns N' Roses, too, but I like Bon Jovi. I mean, I, I, could, I can sing every song from Slippery When Wet and New Jersey without a problem. Front I think to I back, could probably sing Slippery thing. When Wet, but I... Can't do New Jersey, too, No, tour, I huh? can't do New See, Jersey. See, look at that. When you're doing... All these different songs, do you feel like, I mean, nowadays you see a lot of bands, they kind of have the the little iPads on the on the stand and they're, they, they can double check the lyrics. Do you do that or do you think you got them all in your head? For the most part, I have them in my head. We do all have the, um, like the stands for our phones and whatnot. That's when we do get requests. Um, that's when I'll look at the lyrics. And you'll be like, I want to make sure I'm saying this yes. right. Yeah. But I typically don't like to read lyrics because you lose all your emotion when you're reading. So, I mean, I could get the melody, but you're not having the passion, the emotion, so right. it doesn't come out. Then you're doing karaoke with a live band. Yeah, exactly. Right. But, I mean, just to get through it, if it's a request that we're not that familiar with. So, a lot of times I just need, like, the first line of, you know, the verse, and then I could just, like, veer off from there. Sometimes I make up words, but people don't notice, so it's fine. <laughs> That's okay, because there's plenty of whiskey and they don't know what's going exactly. on. Uh, whiskey and Harmony is going to be at Music Fest at the American Legion Saturday, the 22nd of July. Starts at 2, goes until 11. You guys are the headliner, from what I understand, or the last band going on? Yes, we're going on from 7.30 to 10.30. There you go. And then Polly and the Shakers are going to go from 3.30 to 6.30. Uh, there's going to be food, cold drinks. They've got a great bar over there at the Legion. You don't need to be a member to be there uh, on any day of the week, and you, you don't need to be a member to go over there uh, for the festival. And there'll be activities for the kids. It's billed as fun for the entire family on Saturday the 22nd. Uh, if you want to learn more, about Whiskey and Harmony and see where they're at. You just put their name in Whiskey and Harmony and you put a dot com after that. And uh, Sarah, thanks so much for uh, for coming down and telling us all about it. We look forward to seeing you on the 22nd. Definitely. Thanks, Chris. We're looking forward to the gig. It is now time for your EP podcast, Word on the Street, brought to you by the brand new Spoken Vine Wine Bar and Bottle Shop on the northeast corner of 95th and Kedzie. The wine list extensive, the bar beautiful, sitting a high table, low table, at the bar, maybe on one of the couches, a 21 and over establishment, and that menu is so tasty. See more at SpokenVineWines.com. The Evergreen Park Police Department wants to let you know that there are some fake social media accounts claiming to represent EPPD. The department does not have any official social media accounts at this time. That's why people like Lorraine Swanson, who was on earlier from the patch, getting that information out on Thursday was so important. If you come across a suspicious account claiming to represent the police department, report them to the social media platform. For now, official updates are only on the Village website and through official press releases. Meanwhile, as of July the 1st, point of sale inspections in Evergreen Park have resumed and are now required for all residential and commercial sales. Inspections take place on Monday from 10 a.m. until 2 p.m please contact the building department to schedule an inspection at 708-422-1551. If you want to work for the village, they have a part-time clerk position and youth assistant position now available on the village website. And the memories to go village-wide garage sale is happening on September the 9th. You can get your application right now. 
9 a.m. until 2 p.m. on the 9th at Yukich Field. Visit the Village's official website for more details and to apply. This Wednesday, the 19th, Taylor Swift Dance Folklore Evermore happening at the Evergreen Park Senior Center, 9547 South Homan. It's not for seniors though, although I think they would enjoy dancing the Taylor Swift as well. Ages 9 to 11 on Wednesday from 4.30 to 6 p.m., 12 to 15 from 6 p.m. until 7.30. $12 a class. And the next free concert in the park is happening on Friday, August the 4th at 6 p.m. This one at James J. Sexton Park at 91st and Rockwell. Smiley Tillman Band is coming. Mark it down on your calendars. If you have anything for the word on the street or want to reach out about anything else, remember, you can reach out at the eppodcast.com. August 1st begins the first annual Battle of Evergreen Park. This is something we've been talking about all summer long. If you check out the live shows when we do them on Thursday nights on YouTube and through Facebook, you've heard me talk about this even more. The places we go all around Evergreen Park to eat, drink, and be merry with the rest of the community pitted against each other in a grand tournament to see which place is the ultimate place to visit here in Evergreen Park. Already announced to be part of this 18 seed tournament in no particular order. Baracos, Rosangela's, Chai Tongue, Porter Cullens, Tavern in the Green, Titi's, Cravings, and add to that list two places that you've already heard about on this episode. The home of Music Fest this Saturday, July the 22nd, the American Legion. Put him on the list. And the brand new Spoken Vine added into the competition. I stopped by there recently. Can the newcomer make a run in the tournament that kicks off on August the 1st? Here's what they had to say about their new spot at 95th and Kedzie. All right, man, brand new Spoken Vine, and, like, this is the chillest place that I've done this at. So, like, I mean, the moment moment I start talking, I hear the entire place is kind of going, like, ooh, what's going on over there? But it, it's it's a new wine bar here in Evergreen Park. I have Reed and Bridget here. Who's the cook, first of all? That would be me. Yep, I'm back there. Um, I have a great team beside me, but, yeah, these are my recipes and my ideas and what I wanted to bring to the neighborhood. This I, this is what I want to eat when I go out. So uh, what is the big, what's the big item so far? I mean, I know you just opened, but, I mean, like, what do you see people gravitating to right now on the menu, or what would you rather them try when they walk in? Um, a big success has been the meatballs. Yeah. Which I spent a lot of time developing. Yeah, it's a good size plate, the meatballs, yeah. too. Yeah. Um, and then I'd say my next favorite is the mushroom cheese bake. It's like a gratin. It's got mushrooms and artichokes and a bunch of cheese and brie on top of it. Very gooey. You get um, crostinis to dip it in. Uh, it's just, it's delicious. Was the idea what will pair well with wine or is that all separate? Like you, when you're coming up with your menu and your wines, are you keeping track of like, oh, we have this food and this food would be good with this type of wine or is it more of like the kitchen's its thing, the wine's its thing, it's just working? Doesn't everything go with wine? Everything goes with wine. Everything <laughs> pairs with champagne. Wine. And if you just have great food, yeah. everything works with it. So, <laughs> And I have a Bridget, so all of our food is great. There you go. It is very good. You've been behind the bar, I've noticed. Yes. All right, so... Um, there's a lot of options. Like you can come in, you get a flight, you do the pre- your preset flights. Yes. I know you can make your own flight, different sizes. Yep. You heard my review. I was yep. already telling people what the best value was. I was like the big glass. Of course. Okay. Is Always the best value. The big big glass. glass is the best value. And then the preset 
like flight. Yes. If you want to do a flight, the preset one was actually really good, and like it wasn't like it wasn't like you were just trying to pick like the bottom ones on the menu. You gave a really good selection of wines. How did you how did you pick what you were going to do? Well, uh, for our first round of flights, we just wanted something that kind of crossed the board. So like uh, I think you had the did you have the red or the white? I did the red. Okay, I'm not a white one. So, I'm not so a white wine for guy. the red, we went with uh, Pinot Noir, which is going to be a much lighter wine than a Mont. Uh, I would butcher this Mont. Montepulciano. 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 Yes, I do not speak French or Italian. That's Italian. Um, it's an I actual town. Both. I've been there. Yeah, but you, <laughs> you know, so 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 you so you get a little bit more depth with it. Then we moved into the um, the uh, oh my brain's not working. Do you have a Merlot? We have the Merlot, which is funny yeah. because I'm always one of those people who's like I'm not drinking a Merlot. I'm not a Merlot fan, and I thought that Merlot was really good. And I think it was because first of all, it was a French Merlot and not a California one. I yes. never really liked the California ones, but that was really good. And secondly, there was something vanilla in it that was really good that that made that made that wine. Yeah, and you'll get that out of your French Merlots a lot. They yeah. t- tend to get uh, cask cask aged, so that really brings out those flavors in them. But yeah, we wanted to make sure we had something that kind of span the span the gamut, so people can try new stuff because that's what we're really really about. So we're gonna even now we're gonna start expanding our uh, by the glass menu immediately. Um, I want to have 100 wines by the glass, like, real soon. I've got to say, that is the most Southside thing to say to that you're trying to get the most value for your dollar. Yeah, it is. Yeah, your big glass. It's a good big value. Big glass, good value. <laughs> um, you know, the portions of the food. Yeah. Good value. Oh, the meatballs. Great value. <laughs> it's insane. It's like a whole meal right there. Yeah. You got it, you got it, it basically listed like an appetizer, and that is that is, that is is hearty. So, yeah, no, I... I loved it when You're I came here. You're supposed to share it. Yeah, yeah, but why? <laughs> why would I do that? It's so good, Bridget. The EP Podcast Battle of Evergreen Park brought to you proudly by SidSauce.net. The pepper is grown in Evergreen Park. The sauce is developed here. It's the only hot sauce I keep here at the Nine Foot Homemade Oak Bar and up in the kitchen as well. See every sauce they have. Get it delivered to your door at SidSauce.net. 18 seeds in this tournament. Nine of them announced so far. The final nine seeds will be announced on the next episode of the EP Podcast. And you can get your favorite place added in. All you have to do is reach out through the eppodcast.com. Call us with that little microphone symbol that's in the corner of your device when you go to the website. Use the contact form. Hit us up on social media. Slide right into our DMs. Thursday night, we've got a live show. Jump in there and tell us who should be added. The final nine will be added into the pool this week, and then the seating will be released to all of you. Voting will occur online over a couple of weeks at the beginning of August. Who will be crowned the champion of Evergreen Park in the first ever Battle of Evergreen Park? You'll hear it anywhere podcasts can be found and always at the eppodcast.com. It's the EP Podcast. All things Evergreen Park. It's the EP Podcast. Evergreen Park.